thought you wouldn't open a book before coming, eh, Potter? Harry forced himself to keep looking straight into those cold eyes. He had looked through his books at the Dursleys, but did not expect him to remember everything in 1,000 magical herbs and fungi. Snape was still ignoring Hermione's quivering hand. What is the difference, Potter, between Monk's Hood and Wolf's Bane? At this, Hermione stood up, her hand stretching toward the dungeon ceiling. I don't know, said Harry quiet, quietly. I think Hermione does, though. Why don't you try her? A few people laughed. Harry caught Seamus's eye, and Seamus winked. Snape, however, was not pleased. Sit down, he snapped at Hermione. For your information, Potter, Afsodel and Wormwood make a sleeping potion so powerful it is known as the drought, Draught of the Living Dead. A bezoar is a stone taken from the stomach of a goat, and it will save you from, the, from most poisons. As for Monk's Hood and Wolfsbane, they are sa the same plant, which also goes by the name of Asinite. Well, why aren't you copying that down? There was a sudden rummaging of quills and parchment. Over the noise, Snape said, And a point will be taken from Gryffindor House for your cheek, Potter. Things didn't improve for the Gryffindors as, po as the potions lesson continued. Snape put them all into pairs and set them mi to mixing up a simple potion to cure boils. He swept around in his long black cloak, watching them weigh dried nettles and crush fa snake fangs, criticizing almost everyone except Malfoy, who he, whom he seemed to like. He was just telling everyone to look at the perfect way Malfoy had, stew had stewed his horned slugs when clouds of acid green smoke and loud hissing filled the dungeon. Neville had somehow managed to melt Seamus's cauldron into a twisted blob, and their potion was seeping across the stone floor, burning holes in people's shoes. Within seconds, the whole class was standing on their stools while Neville, who had been drenched in the potion when the cauldron collapsed, moaned in pain as angry red boils sprang up all over his arms and legs. Idiot boy! snarled Snape, clearing the spilled potion away with one wave of his wand. I suppose you added the porcupine quills before taking the cauldron off the fire? Neville whimpered as Boyle started to pop all over his nose. Take him to the hospital wing, Snape spat at Seamus. Then he rounded to Harry and Ron, who had been working next to Neville. You, Potter, why didn't you tell him not to add the quills? Thought he'd make you look good if he got it wrong, did you? That's another point you've lost for Gryffindor. This was so unfair that Harry opened his mouth to argue, but Ron kicked him behind their cauldron. Don't push it, he muttered. I've heard Snape can turn very nasty. As they climbed the steps out of the dungeon an hour later, Harry's mind was racing and his spirits were low. He had lost two points for Gryffindor in his very first week. Why did Snape hate him so much? Cheer up, said Ron. Snape's always taking points off of Fred and George. Can I come and meet Hagrid with you? At five to three, they left the castle and made their way across the grounds. Hagrid lived in a small wooden house on the edge of the, gra of the, edge of the Forbidden Forest forest. A crossbow and a pair of galoshes were outside the front door. When Harry knocked, they heard a frantic scrambling from inside and several booming barks. Then Hagrid's voice rang out saying, back Fang, back. Hagrid's big hairy face appeared in the crack as he pulled the door open. Hang on, he said, back Fang. There was only one room inside. Hams and pheasants were hanging from the ceiling, a copper kettle was boiling on the open fire, and the, in the corner stood a massive bed with a patchwork quilt over it. Make yourselves at home, said Hagrid, letting go of Fang, who bounded straight for Ron and started licking his ears. Like Hagrid, 
Fang was clearly not as fierce as he looked. This is Ron, Harry told Hagrid, who was pouring boiling water into a large teapot and putting rock cakes onto a plate. Another Weasley, eh? said Hagrid, glancing at Ron's freckles. I spent half me life chasing your twin brothers away from the forest. The rock cakes were shapeless lumps with raisins that almost broke their teeth, but Harry and Ron pretended to be enjoying them as they told Hagrid all about their first lessons. Fang rested his head on Harry's knee and drooled all over his robes. Harry and Ron were delighted to hear Hagrid call Filch that old git. And as for that cat, Mrs. Norris, I'd like to introduce her to Fang sometime. Do you know, every time I go up to the school, she follows me everywhere. Can't get pat, get, ugh, sorry, can't get rid of her. Filch puts her up to it. Harry told Hagrid about Snape's lesson. Hagrid, like Ron, told Harry not to worry about it, that Snape liked hardly any of the students. But he seemed to really hate me. Rubbish, said Hagrid. Why should he? Yet Harry couldn't help thinking that Hagrid didn't quite meet his eyes when he had said that. How's your brother Charlie? Hagrid asked Ron. I liked him a lot. Great with animals. Harry wondered if Hagrid had changed the subject on purpose. While Ron told Hagrid all about Charlie's work with dragons, Harry picked up a piece of paper that was lying on the table under the tea cozy. It was a cutting from the Daily Prophet. Gringotts break-in latest. Investigations continue into the break-in at Gringotts on, 30, on the 31st of July, widely believed to be the work of dark wizards or witches unknown. Gringotts goblins today insisted that nothing had, was, had been taken. The vault that was searched had been, in fact, emptied that same day. But we're not telling you what was in there, so keep your noses out, uh, out if you know what's good for you, said a Gringotts spokes goblin after this ha said a Gringotts spokes goblin this afternoon. Harry remembered Ron telling him on the train that someone had tried to rob Gringotts, but Ron hadn't mentioned the date. Hagrid, said Harry, that Gringotts break-in break happened on my birthday. It might have been happening while we were there. There was no doubt about it. Hagrid definitely didn't meet Harry's eyes this time. He grunted and offered him another rock cake. Harry read the story again. The vault that was searched had been, had been in fact, emptied earlier that same day. Hagrid had emptied Vault 713, if you could call it emptying, taking out one, that grubby little package. Had that been what the thieves were looking for? As Harry and Ron walked back to the castle for dinner, their pockets weighed down with rock cakes they had been so they had been too polite to refuse, Harry thought that none of the lessons he had had so far had given him as much to think about as tea with Hagrid. Had Hagrid collected that package just in time? Where was it now? And did Hagrid know something about Snape that he didn't want to tell Harry? That's the end of chapter eight. Next up, chapter nine, The Midnight Duel.